Most shops in RuneScape have a buy five items option if there's more than five items in stock. The candle shop in Catherby, though, has a buy four option. However, if you attempt to buy four white candles instead, you'll get a free four candle. Welcome to some more useful and useless RuneScape information, so whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you think this shield looks cool, keep watching as I'll tell you how to unlock this hidden cosmetic override. To unlock it, all you'll need to do is complete the Diamond in the Rough quest. After completing the quest, head over to this location south of the Lumbered Swamp in the Caridian Desert. Once inside, pick up the bronze scimitar you can find on the floor and start slicing open the dung beetles. After a few kills, you'll find that they drop the Atten Shield and or the Urius Axe. After picking up either of these items or both, you'll lock them as a permanent cosmetic override. Now, I'm not really a fan of the axe, but I reckon the shield is worthy of some fashionscape sets, and that's why I'm sharing it in this video. If you ever find yourself losing your salve amulet E, or you need to get your salve amulet enchanted, well, the fastest way of doing so isn't, in fact, going through the layer of Tarn Razalor. No, as viewers have suggested in a previous video, and I didn't know this myself, you can use a Ring of Slaying, which you can buy for Slay Points, you don't actually need to buy the ability to craft them, unless you want more of them. Simply buy one Ring of Slayer, teleport to the Tarn's Lair, go through the North Passageway, past the dogs, and then into the northern room and then simply grab that book and use it to enchant your salve amulet. Now, I don't know what it looks like if you haven't killed Tarn before, but you're probably going to need to kill Tarn first to complete the mini quest and then get the book. This is a huge time saver as you don't need to go through the ridiculous agility course-like thing to get to this end section. If you're one of those players that likes to try their luck at the Abomination boss to get that rare Abomination cape, you can make the fight almost 50% faster by using Necromancy and the Death Mark Incantation. The Abomination only has 66,000 life points, and with Death Mark applied, you'll automatically execute the boss at 30,000 life points when using Necromancy abilities. Unfortunately, restarting the boss fight still requires you to right-click the gate, and then click the rock, and then go through some dialogue. Really annoying. Did you know you could check your metal bank and therefore the amount of ores and bars you have from your bank by clicking on this icon? Well, in case you didn't, now you know. Unfortunately, it's just the ability to view your metal bank and you won't be able to withdraw anything from this interface. If you ever find yourself in a dark area in RuneScape, mainly in the old areas or perhaps during quests, simply right-click your world map icon, choose skybox and filters, and then click the midday skybox filter. This will light up any dark area in the game, which is incredibly useful for something like the dungeoneering skill where the majority of the floors are incredibly dark. A lot of players dislike dungeoneering, in fact, so many players dislike Dungeoneering that I made a dedicated video about this not too long ago. A solid way of training Dungeoneering as a daily is, surprise surprise, to do the Dungeoneering daily challenges. In Burthorpe, you can quickly toggle every skill you've got maxed if you want to increase the odds of getting Dungeoneering daily challenges. If you're maxed and you're going for 120, you can block everything and just get Dungeoneering dailies. Now, before you start doing daily dungeons to complete your challenges, you should know that the fastest way to complete these challenges other than obviously using tokens you've saved up, is to do Shifting Tombs. Shifting Tombs is located in the fast travel section of the Menifal City, which is accessed after completing the Jack of Spades quest. Now you're probably saying, okay, Protox, so what do I need to know about Shifting Tombs to do this very quickly and efficiently? Well, very little, as we're not actively trying to complete the Shifting Tomb for reward, we're simply trying to get towards the exit. If you're lucky, you can spawn right next to the exit rope, which means you can complete your Dungeoneering Daily Challenge in like 15 seconds. Otherwise, you should just know that you need to click these rocks and stand still to move them out of the way if they're blocking your path towards the exit, or if it's a barrel, you can click it while moving and you'll automatically smash it. The only other tip you need is to sometimes extend your mini-map to see where the actual exit is. It will take you less than a minute to find the exit pretty much every single time, and if you're lucky, like I said, the exit will spawn next to you. You'll be breezing through your daily dungeoneering challenges like never before. You're welcome. I created a video on how to clean over 160,000 herbs or grimy herbs per hour a little while back. That same exact setup can be used to charge urns at a stupid fast rate. All you need to do is go into your layout mode and resize your game view, make it as small as possible and place it in the bottom right corner of your screen. Next, make a bank preset with your urns and runes, or if you can use a staff for unlimited runes, as you can do that now as well, an earth staff for, let's say, for example, woodcutting urns. Then keep on the urns, 
Go into your gameplay settings and turn on one button gameplay. And then all you need to do is hold spacebar and the keybind for your urns and then keep left clicking with a minor delay on your bank like this. Thanks to the resized game interface, you can do this without having to move your mouse if placed correctly and it's super easy and super fast. You can also apply this method to assembling crystal keys except instead of a small delay between every single click, you can simply spam click your left mouse button. Do with this information what you will. The Joint Oyster D&D, which is unlocked after the Beneath Cursed Tides quest, is something every player should be doing every single month or actually should be doing twice. If you have a monthly D&D reset token, you can open the oyster twice every single month. All you need to do is feed it, then reset your giant oyster, and then open it, and then feed it again to get it ready for the next month. This is great because you get a bunch of clue score reward items, which do count towards your collection logs, and if you're very, very lucky, you can get something like a shadow, third age, or even a blood die. Like I said, if you have your monthly D&D reset tokens, and you have this unlocked, you should be doing this twice every single month. The odds of you getting something big are there. Slim, but there. Before you end your daily runescape session, don't forget to activate a skilling or PVM or are you plan on using the next time you log back in as you'll get to use it and it will be ready for another activation right after. With that being said, we've come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed random information like this, check out the last video in this series linked below. And don't forget to subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.